Today I'll be building the fastest gaming PC for only a thousand dollars. With brand new PC parts coming out and mining becoming obsolete, PC parts have never been this cheap. This is literally the best time to build a PC. I mean, you can get an RTX 3070 right now for less than $400 in the used market and a 3070 Founders Edition for only $400. This entire PC cost me only $926 with a 12400F and an RTX 3070. And I still have money left over for cable extensions and a Windows 10 Pro CD key, which I was able to get for around $15 from VIP or CDKey.com. If you guys are planning on building a PC, make sure to get your keys from that website and use the code TS20 for an extra 20% off. Let's say you don't wanna buy a used graphics card. You wanna get something new so it's still under warranty. Well, I got you covered. Even with a brand new PNY RTX 3070, the cost of this entire build is still around $1,000. I mean, fine, it's only $26 over the budget, but you are still getting all new parts for this PC. So with that said, let's start the build. Don't have the time or knowledge to build a PC? Well, that's fine. That's why light technology exists. All their PCs are reasonably priced and they are transparent on the costs, so you know exactly where your money is going. They already have a few of their PCs equipped with the new Ryzen 7000 series CPUs like their Phantom X and Z systems. But if you want to build a PC yourself, you can still experience what it's like building a PC for the first time with their build kits. They have a variety of kits to choose from with different budgets in mind and they each have their own dedicated build guide with customer support in case you run into any problems. Now once you get your PC and if you don't like it for some reason, you can send it back to them for a full refund within the first 30 days. But if you do end up keeping it and you run into any issues, they'll send you a replacement PC as soon as possible and then you can send your old one back free shipping. To learn more about light gaming PCs, click the link down below. So for the processor, we are going with the i5-12400F for several reasons. Number one, I'm just sick and tired of doing Ryzen builds. It's always the Ryzen 5 5600 paired with whatever GPU we can fit in that certain budget. So this time, I'm gonna give Team Blue a little bit of love. The second reason is that the 12400F actually performs slightly better than the Ryzen 5 5600 when paired with an RTX 3070 or higher in 1080p. It's not record-breaking numbers by any means, but you know, it's still a very solid, capable CPU for the money. Plus it supports DDR5 memory. So if you guys do plan on upgrading later down the line, your CPU already supports DDR5. So all you gotta do is buy a new motherboard and new memory. Keep in mind that the 12400F does not have any E-cores, just six performance cores and six threads. If you guys have an extra $100 to burn, I would make the jump to the 12600K instead. That will give you an extra four E-cores. So the motherboard I decided to pair the CPU with is the ASRock B660M Pro RS. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, ASRock is never my first choice when it comes to motherboard selection. I personally hate their UI. It is complete garbage when you're inside the BIOS, but I couldn't pass this one up just because of the features it offers for the money. For $100, you get a solid B660 board with decent VRM heat sinks, and you get two M.2 SSD slots. I always love the fact that this board has four DIMM slots instead of two like the other budget B660M boards in this price range. This means you can add two more sticks in the future if you want to upgrade your system. Plus, it's got a nice selection of fan headers on here. We have a total of five, including a CPU fan header. So we have the choice of adding up to four additional fans in this build. You even have the option of installing a Wi-Fi card directly to the board instead of buying a USB version and using up a USB port in the back of your board. So the i5-12400F is a locked CPU and it doesn't get that hot. So there's no need in buying an aftermarket cooler. So we're sticking with the stock heatsink. This is more than capable uh, of keeping the temps down. Plus you can use that extra savings towards other parts of the build. However, if you have an extra $30 to spend and you do want a better cooler, I'll drop a link to a few coolers I recommend for this build. Okay, moving on to memory. This was a very easy choice. The G-Skill rip jaws are pretty much the staple of all budget builds. You get very fast sticks that are also compatible with a wide array of motherboards because these are actually on the QVL of most manufacturers. This means the memory is guaranteed to be compatible with your motherboard, which also means you can enable XMP in the BIOS without worrying about system instabilities. These are really fast sticks as well. You get a 3600 megahertz frequency with CL16 timing for dirt cheap. 
really great memory sticks for the money. For storage, we're keeping it simple with a one terabyte M.2 SSD from PNY. This is actually one of the best deals I can find currently on a one terabyte drive. We still have an extra M.2 SSD to use as well as four SATA ports. So you can add one more M.2 SSD in the future and up to four hard drives or four 2.5 inch SSDs. Now there are a lot of really great choices when it came to budget cases, but ultimately decided to go with the Moravol because of all the features it has for the price. You get a nice mesh panel in the front with two included 120 millimeter RGB fans. There's also a PSU shroud. And my personal favorite, a glass side panel that sits on a hinge, making it extremely convenient to access your components on the inside. I'm not gonna lie, this was definitely the selling point of the case for me. You know, it's really difficult to find a good looking case with decent airflow and two or more included fans for around 60 bucks. So that's why the Moravol was the best choice for this build. So powering the entire build is a 650 watt bronze certified power supply from Ares Gaming. I've used this power supply so many times in my previous budget builds. I highly, highly recommend these guys over Corsair and EVGA if you're looking to save some money on your budget build. So we did talk about the Gravis card earlier in the video. With a budget of $1,000, there should be absolutely no reason why you should settle for anything less than an RTX 3070. Now, if you're not a fan of Nvidia and you wanna go with the AMD route and you wanna save a little bit of money, you can go with the RX 6700 XT instead for around $50 less, depending on what brand of card you're looking at. But keep in mind that the RX 6700 XT is 11% slower than the RTX 3070 in 1080p and about 13% slower in 1440p. So in this case, you are losing out on some gaming performance if you wanna save additional money. I mean, if budget is really tight for you guys, honestly, I would just spend $400 on a used 3070. It's $100 cheaper than a brand new one, but at the end of the day, it is your choice. This is one part of the case I actually don't like. The PCI brackets in the back are break off only. So once you take these off, you can't put them back on. So you gotta snap out two, because it is a two slot card. Oh, what's a tight fit. Oh my God. I think we can make it work though. Yeah. I also wanna mention real quickly that the PNY RTX 3070 that we have in this build is an LHR card, which stands for light hash rate. All this means is that the hash rate has been reduced by Nvidia, which makes these cards worthless to miners. In return, they are sold at a much cheaper price. I do wanna make it clear that this does not affect gaming performance whatsoever. You get the same exact FPS as you would on a card that doesn't have LHR. All right, so the PC's done. Let's jump into some benchmarks. Reloading.
remaining. So yeah guys, that was some very impressive performance in both 1080p and 1440p. This little PC kicks ass. All you gotta do is pair it with a nice 144Hz monitor and you're set. I'll drop a link to a video I did where I went over the best budget 144Hz monitors available for those shopping around for one. But yeah, it's crazy to see how much performance you can get now with $1,000. I do wanna take a moment and talk about thermals real quick. So for the most part, the two intake fans in the front did a pretty good job in keeping all the components nice and cool. We didn't experience any thermal throttling while gaming or any stutters or any crashes. But the GPU did hit peak temps of 75 degrees. Now this is mostly because there are no exhaust fans in the case. We have only positive pressure in here. Adding one exhaust fan in the back of the case dropped the GPU temps all the way down to 70 degrees. That's a five degree drop just by adding an exhaust fan in the back. Here's a better demonstration while running the Heaven benchmark. So the first half of the benchmark is with the extra exhaust fan in the back. As you guys can see, it's doing a good job keeping the GPU temps at 70 degrees Celsius peak. But then when I disconnect the exhaust fan cable, the temps started to climb. You can actually see when that took place. The GPU temps gradually went up to 75 degrees Celsius because there was no extra fan on the top to exhaust all the hot air out of the case. Now the CPU on the other hand wasn't affected as much by the exhaust fan as you can tell. The temps did climb, but the difference was marginal. Adding the exhaust fan in the back benefits the GPU more than it does the CPU. Or if you guys have another $11 laying around, I would pick up a triple fan pack from up here. You get three 120 millimeter fans for $11, which is a crazy good deal. So in this scenario, I would remove the bottom intake fan and I would put it in the back as exhaust. It will drop the temps of your GPU by five degrees, which is nuts. But if you guys have $11 to spare, personally, I would pick up a triple fan pack from up here. You get three 120 millimeter RGB fans and I would put all of those as exhaust. So two in the top, one in the back, just like how you see here. I'll drop a link to all of these down below as well. Now the case was a great choice for this build because it was extremely easy to build in. Tons of space for cable management. You got space for two hard drives and an SSD in the back for storage. I also love the two cutouts on the PSU shroud, which helped me route the cables easily for the GPU and the bottom connectors for the motherboard. And you still get an option to add two more 120 millimeter fans on the PSU shroud if you want. Personally, I think it's a bit overkill, but it's nice to see that they give you all these options. Another thing I love about this case is the airflow. It does such a good job of pulling in air from the front. And that's mostly because of how close the fans are to the mesh panel. This also frees up space inside the case to install your GPU. It can comfortably, and I mean comfortably, fit in a graphics card up to 280 millimeters. Now for those of you who are looking to save an extra $100 by going with a used RTX 3070 Founders Edition, 
this is what your PC will look like. The extra $100 went towards cable extensions and some extra fans for better cooling. All I'm saying is that you have options. Whether you go with a brand new GPU or a used GPU, you're still gonna get amazing 1440p and 1080p performance for only $1,000. Okay, let's say you're not a fan of Intel and you prefer AMD instead. That's fine. I'll drop a link to both an AMD CPU and a motherboard that I recommend going with, which is also gonna be compatible with this build. Everything I talked about in this video will be linked down below for you guys. If you like this budget build and you wanna see more on the channel, just let me know by tossing a like. Also make sure you guys subscribe for more awesome PC builds coming your way. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in the next one.